I'm back in 2 Kings chapter 8. And last time we looked at King Jehoram. And now we're going to look at a king named King Ahaziah. So 2 Kings chapter 8 verse 23. And the rest of the acts of Joram and all that it all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah so king jehoram he was the fifth king of judah his name means jehovah is exalted his length of reign was eight years spiritual state evil his tribe judah his father was jehoshaphat his wife was athaliah and that's Ahab and Jezebel's daughter, and she's one that pushed him to be even more evil. His prophets is Elisha and Elijah, and he ruled during the reign of Jehoram, king of Israel. Remember, there's some of these kings got the same names, can make it kind of confusing. The verses you'll find King Jehoram is in in 2 Chronicles 21 and 2 Kings chapter 8, verses 16 through 29, the age of his death is 40, and he co-reigned for a time with his father Jehoshaphat. So that's King Jehoram. But now it says, And Jehoram slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. So King Ahaziah. <clears throat> Ahaziah will be the sixth king of Judah, and he's also called Azariah in some places. His name means possessed of Jehovah. The length of his reign is one year. His spiritual state, evil. Tribe is Judah. His parents are Jehoram and Athaliah. His prophet is Elijah. He rules during the reign of Jehoram, king of Israel. And some of the things that he's known for is his mother being Athaliah, and he's killed by Jehu. The age of his death is 43, and the verses you'll find him in is 2 Kings 8, 24 through 29, and 2 Chronicles 22, 1 through 12. But 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 25. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, begin to reign. And there's some confusion over when he actually started reigning because in uh, 2 Chronicles 22 and verse 2, it says that Ahaziah was 42 years old when he began to reign, whereas right here it says that he's uh, 22 years old when he begins to reign. And what you got going on here is that he's anointed king at 22, but he doesn't get on the throne until he's 42. Similar situation to, with David to where, you know, he was anointed when he was young, a young boy bef before he even fought Goliath, but then he didn't take the kingdom and the throne till he was 30. So that's where you have the confusion. But he actually gets on the throne when he's 42, dies at 43. So two and 20 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. He only gets one year. You thought Jehoram only got a little bit. He only got eight years, but Ahaziah only gets one year. And his mother's name was Athaliah. And she's going to become like the um, Jezebel of the kingdom of Judah. Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. Omri, also a bad guy. We, we uh, did a lesson on Omri back in 1 Kings 16, 21 through 28. He's an evil king, and his evil ways just carry on through his children. Carrying on through Ahab, Athaliah, Jehoram, Ahaz Ahaziah. 
I mean, it just carries on. Remember that. Your, your wickedness and your habits and things that you do will carry on. Like, you just be around, like, a, a older person and then be around their kid and then be around their grandkid. You're going to see some of the similar characteristics, similar habits, similar ways that they talk even. You know, a lot of their slang words, things that they say, how they do things, it just carries on. It continues to carry on for, for generations. You need to remember that. Just like Omri, he was a wicked, wicked man. It carried right on through. And it says in verse 27, And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab, for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. So the house of Ahab, remember that's Ahab is Israel's king. We're looking at Ahaziah, king of Judah. But you see, they intermarried. This mixed marriage between Jehoram, who was Jehoshaphat's son, king of Judah, the marriage of Jehoram to Athaliah from the kingdom of Israel. She was Ahab, king of Israel's daughter. That mixed marriage, it's, it's causing both kingdoms to be overly, over much wicked. Because you see, Ahaziah, the son of Athaliah, is walking in the way of the house of Ahab now and doing much evil in the sight of the Lord. And every thing that you do is in the sight of the Lord. Every evil thing you do, no, nothing's going unnoticed. Nothing will go unpunished. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He walked in the way. He walked in the way of the house of Ahab. And there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Bible says the way of transgressors is hard. He's going a hard way. And he's going to find out soon. Now, verse 28, and he went with Joram. Now, don't get confused. Remember that his, his dad was named Jehoram. But then this other king that's reigning at the same time is also named Je Jehoram. This king is the king of, it, king of Israel. And once again, you got a an alliance with Judah and Israel when Israel is beyond wicked. And it's just leading uh, Judah further and further down the wrong road. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to the war. You know, you don't want to go to war. For us, you don't want to go to spiritual warfare along with somebody that's just over much wicked like Joram is. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to the war against Hazael, king of Syria and Ramoth Gilead. And remember, Hazael is that same guy that we just did a lesson on a couple of lessons back who killed his own master, smothered him with a thick cloth. This guy's a rough character here. He went to war against Hazael, king of Syria and Ramoth Gilead, and this Assyrians wounded Joram. And King Joram went back to, to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. So he's wounded. He's going back to get healed up. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel because he was sick. So he's going to see the king of Israel. I mean, they're related. They're like uncle and nephew. And they've got an alliance together. And it just works out perfectly because they're going to be in the same place at the same time for God to bring judgment on them. And God will do that in the Bible. You'll see at the second coming, all the kings are going to gather together in uh, the tribulation time period. At the end of the tribulation time period, you're going to see the kingdoms gathered together so that when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, he can just wipe them all out right there. But, you see, that's all about Ahaziah in this chapter. But remember, you got to go to Second Chronicles and to learn even more detail. So that's where we're going to go is in Second Chronicles. So Second Chronicles, chapter 22. And this is where we'll look at a little outline for Ahaziah. And I'm going to call this Ahaziah's Downfall.
2 Chronicles 22. And next to 2 Chronicles 22, I wrote 2 Kings 8. That way I'll know where it talks about Ahaziah and Kings. I don't have to remember it. I just got it wrote. I'll just have it wrote down. So it says in 2 Chronicles 22 and verse 1, And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his stead. So Ahaziah is going to take Jehoram's spot. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. So his brothers were killed, and he was just the last one left. Maybe not even the best one, but he was the last one left, so he had to take the throne. And now here's where it says 40 and 2 years old. So in the in 2 Kings 8, it said he was 22. Here it says he was 42 years old when Ahaziah, what, when he began to reign. So... Most likely, it's a situation to where he was anointed king at a younger age, but didn't actually take the throne until 42. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. And uh, this can cause confusion for some people sometimes. I don't think it's that confusion. But you see, um, she's the daughter of Ahab, granddaughter of Omri. It goes, Omri, Ahab, Athaliah. And it just doesn't call call her granddaughter or doesn't call people grandson or granddaughter. For example, like when you read the genealogies in Matthew chapter 1, it calls Jesus Christ the son of David, the son of Abraham. He would be, you know, the great, 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 great grandson. It doesn't say all that. It just says, it'll just call him the son of or in this case, the daughter of, even though it was her grandfather. So, although she was granddaughter of Omri, it calls her the daughter of Omri. There's no error there. That's just how it does it. So, Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, he also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. Ahaziah walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. And notice it did not say that phrase there in the last chapter we looked at it did not talk about how his mother was his counselor to do wickedly notice how it gives these great little details that just when i see a sentence like that it just jumps off the page at me i get so many thoughts from seeing his mother was his counselor to do wickedly and that's what we're going to talk about ahaziah's downfall the first one the first thing is ahaziah is a mommy's boy you see that there, his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Where did she come from? The house of Ahab. She was raised horribly by Ahab and Jezebel. Saw Jezebel be a complete hoe probably most of the time. And do, just running down her husband, probably telling him to uh, move out of the way and let her take control and cussing at him and... Uh, beating him down, giving him low self-esteem, making him feel like an idiot all the time. Uh, you don't want to do that if you're a woman. Uh, don't continuously uh, run your husband down. Don't continuously badmouth him, trying to take complete control of the situation, being like a the uh, spiritual leader of your home and being full of the unholy spirit as you're the spiritual leader. That's most likely what Jezebel was doing. That's what Athaliah was doing in her home, most likely. And, you know, if you're a mother, you want to train up your child in the way he should go. You want to be like Timothy's parents. Timothy's Timothy's mother. You know, he was, from. it said, uh, Paul talked about Timothy. He said, from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. I doubt Athaliah was teaching Ahaziah the Holy Scriptures at a young age. It says his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. That's crazy when your mother is your counselor to do wickedly. You see, you got uh, mothers today who, I mean, I pulled up next to a, a, a woman and her daughter and the young daughter in the car, and they were listening to some type of music that had some uh, girl rapper saying all kinds of cuss words, talking about sexual-related stuff right there in front of her daughter. I mean, that's being a mother 
counseling her daughter to do wickedly by just by living that way in front of her. So for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. And I, that reminds me of Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1. It reminds me of that chapter there in Psalm 1 where it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. But look at what Ahaziah did. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. He walked in the counsel of the ungodly. And that was his downfall. He was a mommy's boy. He must have been doing everything mommy said. She must have been reigning through him in a way. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. This is verse 4. For they were his counselors. Notice it says that again. The, the house of Ahab was his counselors. So, you know, um, book of Proverbs, Proverbs eleven fourteen. it says, In the multitude of counselors there is safety. However, that's taken for granted that you know the right kind of counselors to have. If you've got a multitude of good Bible-believing counselors, maybe you're parents are Bible believers, your pastor's a Bible believer, your uncle's a Bible believer, you got older friends that are Bible believers, and a multitude of counselors, there's safety. But when your counselors are Athaliah and the house of Ahab, uh, there's not safety there. That's the ways of death. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors. So he was a mommy's boy. And the next thing, Ahaziah's downfall, is his multitude of wicked counselors. You see, you've got all these people in your life that are always giving you advice. Like I hear, uh, I go to work, I hear people tell me to do certain things that are, they're much older than me. But yet I'm finding that all their advice is completely unbiblical. They may be uh, 20, 30 years older than me. And very much wiser than me in so many ways. But when it comes to certain things, they're giving me the wrong counseling, the wrong advice. Athaliah, these other people, most likely are most likely way older than Ahaziah. But they're giving him the wrong counsel. Just because somebody's older doesn't mean they're always going to give you the right counseling. And you got to learn the Bible to learn if they're giving you the right counseling. If they're telling you the right thing. They're not telling him the right thing. So it's leading him down a path of destruction. It's leading to his downfall. You know, most people um, don't read the Bible. Most people didn't grow up reading the Bible. So even though they may be up in their, you know, in the years where they should be starting to be able to really teach somebody something in their 50s and 60s. They don't have nothing to say that's biblical. They spend all their time doing other stuff. Now they have no wisdom. You know, the, the gray head is a crown of glory if it be found in the ways of righteousness. But it's a sad thing. Most of the gray-haired people today are not found in the ways of righteousness. And they're counseling wickedly. If you got a multitude of counselors, you're going to have safety if these counselors are giving you righteous counsel. But that's not the case here. It says he walked also after their counsel. In verse 5. He walked also after their counsel. And went with Jehoram. The son of Ahab king of Israel. Now remember this Jehoram is not the Jehoram that's his dad. It's the other Jehoram that's the king of Israel. This Jehoram is the son of Ahab. His father, Jehoram, was the son of Jehoshaphat. He walked also after their counsel and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to rule war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth-Gilead. And the Syrians smote Joram. And he returned to be healed in Jezreel because of the wounds which were given him at Ramah when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Azariah, the son of Jeho Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab at Jezreel, because he was sick. So he's Azariah, which is Ahaziah, is going to see 
Jehoram, king of Israel. And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God. You see that? In verse 7, And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God. Ahaziah was a mommy's boy, walking after the counsel of Athaliah. He had a multitude of wicked counselors, and he made the hit list. The destruction of Ahaziah was of God. He's, he's on God's hit list. It says, By coming to Joram, for when he was come, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And that's the guy we're going to talk about next time. This wild character named Jehu. Yeah, I think he's a really underrated character in the Bible. You don't hear much about him. He's pretty much the Lord's hitman. And Ahaziah going down to see Jehoram while he's sick is of God. The whole thing's of God because that puts him right where he needs to be for the Lord's hitman, Jehu, to knock him off. And it says, notice that phrase. It doesn't say this in Second Kings 8. It says, And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God. You know, it was of God for him to be destroyed. And God destroys people. God kills people in the Bible. God raises up somebody to kill people in the Bible. But you get so much detail from Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles really focuses on these kings of Judah, whereas Kings focuses on the kings of Israel primarily. And you just don't want to forsake reading Chronicles. You know, it's the, the devil's uh, put in people's mind that Chronicles is boring. He puts in certain even uh, preachers and teachers' mind that it's boring, and then they tell you that it's boring. Actually, it's not boring at all. There's no there's no part of it that's boring. I mean, you, if you don't like the names, I mean that's one thing. But you there's the it's not just completely names. There's some parts that's just giving you names and stuff. But for the most part, it's these great little stories and these great little phrases that really lead to all this truth and can lead to so much uh, teaching and preaching for somebody to give you. And uh, how does somebody run out of things to teach or preach is beyond me because, I mean, just these little phrases like his mother was his counselor to do wickedly, that leads to so many little thoughts and can go so many ways. You just don't want to forsake reading about these kings. Read, them, read about them in Second Kings and then find it where it talks about them in Chronicles and read about it there because it's going to give even more detail. But... You're going to see in the next lesson, Ahaziah and Jehoram are going to be killed by the Lord's hitman, Jehu. That's who we're going to talk about next time is Jehu.